Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. My name is John Pollock, and today we're chatting all of the news with John Ramdean and Robin Black. And today it's all about injuries across the board affecting various promotions and a welterweight fight for the UFC's return to China later this year. Pat Curran is out of the June 6th Bellator card, where he was set to headline and defend his featherweight title against Patricio Pitbull Freite. Curran suffered a severe right calf strain, and it will keep him out of action for an undisclosed period of time. The card will go ahead as Bellator kicks off their summer series with that card from Thackerville, Oklahoma. Ariel Hawani broke the news that newly signed Jake Shields is off of the World Series of Fighting 11 event on July the 5th, where he was set to make his promotional debut against John Fitch in a welterweight bout. The injury that Shields sustained is unknown. He was signed by the World Series of Fighting after being cut by the UFC earlier this year following a loss to Hector Lombard at UFC 171 in March. The WSOF 11 event will be headlined by lightweight champion Justin Gaethje defending the title against Nick Newell. And yet another injury to report is one to Sergei Haritanov, who is now out of the main event of Glory 17 on June 21st, where he was scheduled to headline the pay-per-view event against Mirko Krokop. Haritanov suffered an injury to his finger and is expected to miss two months of action as Glory looks for a replacement to headline their very first pay-per-view event. And finally, Errol Hawani reported on UFC Tonight that the UFC is targeting a welterweight bout between Hector Lombard and Dong Yun Kim for the August 23rd card they will be holding from Macau, China. The fight is yet to be finalized at this point. Kim has won his last four fights, while Lombard is 2-0 at welterweight since cutting down to the weight class last year with wins over Nate Marquardt and Jake Shields. And I'm here with John Ramdean and Robin Black, two of the only people in mixed martial arts who are not injured after this week. We have lots of injuries to discuss that are affecting uh, kind of your second tier MMA promotions out there. Pat Curran out, Jake Shields out, Sergey Haritanov is out. So where should we start? Maybe with Pat Curran and this Bellator card that's coming up June the 6th as they start their summer series, which I've always been a fan of because you get breathing room between sure. these Bellator cards. It's not every single week. The summer series, they pace them out every couple of weeks. You get to anticipate some fights. We just don't know what the good people of Thackerville are going to get to see on June 6th. Right? Yeah, I, I think when it comes to Bellator, the fans, it, it's really irrelevant. Bellator is there just to put on a show and the fans, you know, they really don't uh, for Bellator, they don't care if the fans boo, if they cheer, or whatever. They are just there to put Assembly on a show. Line MMA. That, that, is, that is really what it is when it comes down to these shows and I think that what Bellator needs to do is they need to focus on fans. they got to develop their hardcore fan base to get the, uh, you know, the people that are in the auditorium or in the venue excited about the stars and it's Bellator's uh, responsibility to also build hey, stars hey Robin, as well. Maybe you get someone in there, uh, maybe a Daniel Strauss interim title. Yeah, yeah, hey man, if you're injured for a couple Because we only got two weeks. of them at this point in Bellator. What's <laughs> yeah, a third? If you're injured for a couple of weeks, man, uh, Alvarez is mad about that. He, he, like, he, he's a bit angry that he's like, hey man, I'm not saying I'm going to be out for a year. It'll be like five to six weeks. It's day to day. And they're like, nah, interim title. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff to work on. And among them is you got to have more stars because when a Curran goes down or an Alvarez goes down, it reverberates through a number of shows. So, you know, we like watching Bellator. It's still on its way up. But that assembly line kind of concept, that is not a Bjorn Rebney joint. That is a Viacom joint. Viacom's running this thing like a business. They're running, it's, it's ruled by balance sheets and numbers and brand confusion and all that that theory and and that affects the way we, we view it and I think that uh, when it comes to Viacom I think they're confused about the whole mixed martial arts landscape if I'm not mistaken they had to cancel their last uh, strike force show or one of their last shows because they felt that Gilbert Melendez and Pat Healy was not a big enough main event we need bigger stars so clearly they don't really follow it uh, like the hardcore fans do because clearly Gilbert Melendez and Pat Healy definitely were worthy of a main event so, yeah, speaking of main events before we get any further what do you guys think of Dong Young Kim and Hector Lombard? I love it. Like from a fighting standpoint, nothing has been more exciting really, not nothing, but something tremendously exciting has been how impactful judo has been. These two guys, this is going to be a killer, killer fight. I think one of the reasons why is because they're both exciting, both their styles are exciting. You have an interesting, uh, you know, when you look at Hector Lombard, former Bellator champion, was successful at 185 pounds. How will he do at 175 or 170 pounds? Looking like, like a beast there. 
there, training with Robbie Lawler, training with Tyron Woodley, uh, just really looking good right now. And I think when you can have important fights in the welterweight division, that it doesn't have to be the number one or number two guy or three or four, that the, the guys around seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven are all very important fights, and they're exciting. I think that's what it comes. And down maybe to. that does somewhat tip the UFC's hand in terms of what they're going to do with Matt Brown next, because everyone assumed that Hector Lombard was a logical opponent for Matt Brown, and that certainly, at least this week, Dana White was saying, "Hey, Nick Diaz and Matt Brown makes a whole lot of sense." But just saying that with a, <laughs> Diaz, I think we'll believe it upon delivery. Yeah, I mean, sure would be fun though, right? Like Matt Brown and Nick Diaz, like. That'd be really fun, right? It'll just cost him $500,000. $505,000 <laughs> to cover Matt Brown as well. I think the bigger issue, though, is just you look at the welterweight division as a whole and say, look it, just match all these guys up against each other. Matt Brown versus Robbie Lawler. Matt Brown versus whoever. Robbie Lawler versus whoever. I just think that yeah, there's so many so many guys in that division that Matt Brown versus Jake Ellenberger. You're telling me people wouldn't want to tune into it. You know you're going to get fireworks. And tell me, doesn't this just go back to what we were saying about Bellator and the, the difference yeah. between you lose one guy and everything goes bad here we just got action fighters top to bottom yeah you do, you certainly have those those luxuries if you if you are the UFC with that roster but quickly getting back to kind of uh, these other promotions right now and World Series of Fighting we mentioned Jake Shields is out they have their next card scheduled at least their July card it's scheduled for July the 5th in Vegas which there just happens to be a UFC yeah. event that night with a couple title fights on it and then we got Glory who loses Ari Tanov who are planning to dive into paper view. I think both are just crazy ideas here. Why you are running July 5th, we don't even know if this is going to be on NBC. That's a big 50-50 right now. And then you have Glory on pay-per-view. I don't know what they're thinking. I think one of the reasons why, I think the World Series of Fighting did it intentionally. They know that everybody's going to be in town for the UFC week, if I'm not mistaken. It's happening in Vegas. The back-to-back -back UFC fights. So if the World Series of Fighting can happen that weekend, try to, it seems like they have a loose affiliation that with day, the UFC. Though, that day, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, in, that in, like, in what fantasy world do people People have $900 to spend on three yeah, fight cards, you know? Or just the, the time. Like, there's certainly going to yeah. be overlapping. I These UFC cards run like seven hours. Yeah, we no. might be in Vegas that weekend. If we are, we'll go to all three of them. But I don't know who else is going to go to it. It's one of those weird things. World Series of Fighting, some very rich guy is losing a lot of money while they have a lot of fun. It's what makes the fight world go round. <laughs> rich folks with, with weird <laughs> ambitions. We have more Fight News Now Extra coming up.